Hey guys, hope you are doing well and welcome back to another video here on the channel. This week, we're going to be talking about four facts that LiPo battery manufacturers for radio control vehicles don't want you to know. Before we dive into the content for today's video, I want you to leave a comment in the section below and let me know what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about battery facts that those battery manufacturers don't want others to know. With that being said, let's talk about what comes to my mind first. Now the first item that comes to mind is about the C rating of a battery pack. Now we did a video not too long ago on battery packs and talked about the C rating. That C rating is very beneficial for us if we were to maximize its value for our radio control vehicles. And we go through all of those facts in that video, which really talks about the performance that we get out of our battery pack. That should be higher. We are also going to get better reliability and lifespan of our battery pack because at the same performance level, our battery pack is going to be able to maintain a cooler operating temperature because it can deliver more power. And the third item that benefits us by having a higher C rating is that we can get even more reliability out of our speed control because we are going to reduce the amount of ripple voltage that we see within that battery pack. However, there's one catch to all of this, and that really is that C rating and how it's actually determined. That C rating is determined by the manufacturer that builds and produces that battery pack. That C rating on the front label of the battery pack essentially comes from the manufacturer's test data and what they are comfortable with placing on the front of that battery pack. There is no regulation or standard that is set for a LiPo manufacturer to be forced into placing something that actually makes sense. With this being said, a LiPo battery manufacturer can essentially place any number on the front of their pack. What this comes down to is essentially you go out and you purchase a 65C rated battery pack and when you're actually using it, you realize that it's not performing up to the expectations that you would have thought it should based on your own calculations. Then you determine that it's probably closer to a 40C rated battery. This is essentially what we're saying here. Now don't worry, there is something you can do about the battery pack that you have already purchased. If you want to know what the actual C rating of it is, you can hop on to the radiocontrolinfo.com website and we have a calculator there that simply uses the internal resistance of the battery pack to determine what the actual C rating is. Along the same lines as C rating, the capacity shares the same similar story. A battery manufacturer is responsible ultimately for placing that capacity of their own battery pack on their front label. They can do the exact same thing with their C rating as they can do with this capacity. The capacity value can be accurate or it may not be. It is really up to that manufacturer to get it right. If they want to market a battery pack with a higher capacity, they can do that. There is no nobody stopping them. However, it is going to be a little bit more difficult to do this with the capacity than it is with the C rating. And the reason why is because most of us that have chargers, as long as it displays the amount of capacity that goes back into the battery pack, we are going to be able to see if that is actually true, or at least within the ballpark of what it should be. The third item that we have ties very well into this whole capacity idea. A battery manufacturer could place a specification of capacity on their battery pack. However, that battery pack could actually live up to its specification, but it also cannot live up to the specification. How does that make sense? Well, let's talk a little bit about that. If I take a battery pack of a capacity to around 2200 milliamp hour, we can actually see two different discharge capacities out of that pack. Now the way that you would do that is by discharging it at two different values. If I only take a tenth of an amp out of that battery pack, the voltage is not going to sag that much because it's not loaded all that significantly. Now if I were to compare that value up against the same discharge capacity out of a battery pack, but instead I change the rate that I'm discharging the pack to upwards of 100 amps, I'm going to see much less capacity out of that 2200 milliamp hour battery pack versus the same test done at a tenth of an amp. And the reason is, is because at 100 amps, that battery is going to be 
pushed much, much harder. And as a result, you're gonna see a voltage sag, a voltage difference there in the actual nominal voltage versus the loaded voltage. That loaded voltage is going to reach the minimum allowable voltage of the battery pack a lot quicker than it would if it was discharged slower. And as a result, you're gonna get less actual capacity out of that battery pack. The main point to take away from what we're talking about with the capacity here is that the discharge rate does influence the amount of discharge capacity that a battery pack has. Now let's jump into the last fact that we have for this video, and that has to do with the connectors that are placed on a battery pack. You may have seen this before where a very small connector is soldered onto a battery pack that can deliver hundreds of amps continuously. And you know that that connector is nowhere near that rating. So the big question is why would a manufacturer do this? Well, there could be a couple different reasons as to why a manufacturer would simply solder on these smaller connectors. Well, it could just be due to the cost of that smaller connector getting soldered onto that battery. And the second reason why this manufacturer could apply that smaller connector is just based off of what's commonly used in the RC industry. There's lots of radio controlled vehicles out there on the market and there is some commonly used connectors that you frequently see. And a manufacturer may just want their battery pack to be used with the highest percentage possible of radio controlled vehicles that are out there. It doesn't matter if your battery pack can deliver a thousand amps if your vehicle is never actually going to pull it. Therefore, that smaller connector can actually work just fine. Now, for most of my radio control vehicles where I'm pulling more than 100 amps continuously, more than likely what I have to do is desolder the connector that came with the battery pack and simply just apply my own connector. The last thing that you want to have happen with your new battery pack is that you have all the power within the battery pack, but when you try to deliver it to your radio control vehicle, your connectors can't do it. They get so hot, they melt away, and it becomes detached. If your radio controlled airplane has its connectors come unsoldered while in flight, you're not going to be having a good day. So it's best to make sure that those connectors can live up to exactly what you intend to put them through. Well guys, that pretty well sums it up for this video. Like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next one. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next Monday.